Hello viewer, a very warm welcome to Elimu TV where you watch and learn. I'm your teacher, Madam Christine Okot, uh, taking you through biology from Form 2. Uh, for all your feedbacks, you can always uh, send your SMS on the number 4007. You can write to us on our Facebook page, which is Elimu TV. And you, call, you can also write to us at our, our Twitter handle is Elimu TV underscore KE. So this is a preview of uh, what our lesson is going to be. Uh, we're first going to review the previous assignment. Then you're also going to discuss the importance of biology. And you're also going to look at the characteristics of living things. And finally, I'll give you an assignment. So let us have a look at the previous assignment. Uh, the question was state and explain other branches of biology that have not been discussed. In our previous uh, lesson, we talked about the branches of biology. We reviewed many of them, but there are so many we could not have been able to review all of them. So there are others which were not reviewed. So that was the assignment. So the first one, which we did not review, we have marine biology. And what is marine biology? This is the study of ocean, ecosystems, plants, animals and other living beings which are within the ocean environment. Then the next uh, branch of biology, we have ethology. This is the study of animal behavior, the study of animal behavior. Then another branch of biology, we have developmental biology. Uh, this is the study of the process through which organisms develop. Then another branch of biology that we did not talk about, we have biomathematics. Just as the word goes bio and we have mathematics, so this is comprising the two uh, spheres uh, to combine them. So this is just the study of biology, biological process through mathematics. The calculations and biology have been merged together. Then Another type, uh, a branch of biology, we have bioengineering. Going from the word, two words have been merged here. We have bio and engineering. So what is this? This is the study of biology through means of engineering with an emphasis on applied knowledge. The last branch of biology we did not talk about is astrobiology. So this is the study of the origin, evolution, distribution, and future of life in the universe. The branches of biology are so many, uh, so there are still some which we have not uh, discussed, but you can always find time uh, to check on them. So going to study today about the importance of biology. So as we had talked last time uh, defining biology, we say that biology is all about studying life and living organisms. Uh, we, are li uh, we are living organisms and we eat living organisms. So we need to understand how we function and how other organisms function around. So this is just the interrelationship between different organisms. So biology helps us to understand how we interrelate within ourselves and with other different organisms. So uh, importance of biology is in two main uh, ways. Uh, first, it helps us to understand our own bodies and the bodies of other organisms. Uh, for example, human beings, uh, we need to understand how systems in our body work. For example, the digestive systems, the nervous system, how all these systems are coordinated within our body so that we can be able to understand the things which are happening in our own bodies and bodies of other organisms. Then another way in which our biology is important, it help us to understand our environment. Uh, the environment in which we are living in, the habitat, how do we relate to, with other organisms, what are some of the things that we can do uh, that can make the environment uh, not to be conducive for the other habitats. So it is in two main uh, ways. It helps us understand our bodies and it helps us to understand our environment. So the first importance of biology 
uh, biology help us to understand how our bodies function. So how various organs and systems work on human body. We have uh, a lot of uh, uh, systems in our body. For example, we have the nervous system, the muscular system, the circulatory system, respiratory system, excretory, the skeleton, and the digestives. All these are systems which are made of organs. So we're supposed to understand how do these systems work in our body? What are some of the things that maybe we can do to harm these uh, systems? And what are some of the things that we can avoid doing? So uh, we also learn how everything is connected in our body. All these processes are interconnected. For example, if one system shuts down, it means other systems also are going to shut down or they will not be able to respond well in our system. Then we also try to learn how the effects of substances on our system. For example, too much intake of fats, what does it do to our system? Uh, too much intake of maybe if you take uh, alcohol and uh, cigarettes, what are some of the things that they will do to a system which will uh, uh, at the end uh, injure our all will injure our bodies or bring harm to our bodies? Then, uh, still under understanding how our bodies function, we are in position to know the structure of our bodies and variation. A good example is the skeleton system. Uh, it helps us to understand how our bodies uh, function, how we move, uh, the bones uh, which help in movement. So all these things, uh, as we study biology, it helps us to understand our own bodies. And it is not just us, but also other organisms within our ecosystem. Then another importance of biology, uh, with the knowledge of biology, it helps us to treat diseases. It is very important subject for medical point of view, which includes identifying diseases and its cure. For example, in the field of pharmacology, uh, pathology, immunology. So pharmacology is uh, the branch of biology that it deals with the making of these medicines. Then pathology is the branch of biology that helps to identify the things which causes this kind of diseases. Then immunology is just uh, the branch of biology that deals with the uh, immune system and how uh, our bodies can be immune against other diseases. So by having just at least a knowledge of biology, for example, when you have a headache, you know you're supposed to take a painkiller. That little knowledge of biology will help you not to be misguided. Maybe, for example, you can go to a chemistry and maybe somebody prescribes for you uh, something which is not supposed to be. So at least that knowledge, you don't have to have the broad knowledge of medicine, but the broad knowledge, it helps us in our daily to daily life. For example, you have a bacterial infection. You know you are not supposed to be given a painkiller. You're supposed to be given something that is going to help curb uh, uh, the, it helps you to curb the infection of which is bacterial. Also, by studying biology, it, we are able to identify the origin of some diseases and deformities, mainly uh, which are caused by genetics. Uh, for example, there are some diseases which are passed from parents to offspring, uh, like the albinisms and other diseases. So we are able to understand uh, that these diseases are passed uh, due to genetic uh, disorder and some uh, diseases which can be passed maybe, for example, if a, a mother is pregnant, then he takes too much of uh, alcohol content. There's a way it's going to deform the baby. So by having this broad knowledge, uh, you, are in, uh, you are in position to know what are these things that are causing the genetic disorders. Then another importance of biology is uh, nutrition. So it's able to devise the perfect diet for our needs. Uh, the nutrients, that is how our body breaks them down. So by studying biology, uh, we get to know what are some of these uh, nutrients that our body needs uh, and what are the function of these nutrients and how are we able to balance our diet so that you don't end up eating too much of starch and neglecting the vitamins. You need to have a balanced diet. So this is the main concern of biochemistry. From the word bio and chemistry, this is merging of two words, biology and chemistry. 
So the nutrients that we take, they have their chemical components. For example, if it's carbohydrates, it has a carbon, it has a hydrogen atom in it and an oxygen. So how these uh, chemical components are related in our body, it's very important. So eating healthier, putting aspects of biology to work within even uh, without even knowing it. So by taking in the balance there, for example, you have an illustration there. Uh, the food is well balanced, looking very delicious. So we have our ugali here, we have uh, skuma wiki, we have uh, fish and some vegetable. So this one is a balanced diet. So by eating this, we know that when you eat carbohydrates, it gives you a lot of energy. When you eat the proteins, it uh, brings a uh, room for growth. And when you eat vitamins, it helps to curb down the diseases. So we should avoid bad eating habits because they contribute to diseases. For example, uh, too much intake of starch and fats. Uh, one can be obese and obese, uh, it's not a good thing within our bodies. The another importance of biology is in exercises. So the key to good health is through exercises. So we cannot just be eating food and you fail to do exercises because they help you to keep fit. And by keeping, uh, by keeping fit, it also helps your systems in your body to regulate properly. So you can, uh, biology helps you to know what kind of exercises are needed for certain age group or what are some of the things that you can do to keep yourself always fit apart from taking good diet. Then, Another importance of biology is in conservation of natural resources. So it helps us to understanding how nature works and what allows it to thrive. And also it helps us uh, in ways we might cause harm to it, that is the environment. Then we look for more environmentally friendly methods of doing things. So by just uh, uh, learning biology, uh, it helps you uh, at least to get to understand your nature how things work in uh, the place that you're living in, what are some of the things that you might be doing knowingly or unknowingly that may cause harm to the environment. Then, what are some of the things that you can do to help to sustain or to help to sustain uh, these natural resources so that they do not uh, become deplete in the future generations? So we have some of the things that help uh, we learn in biology. For example, the effects of afforestation, deforestation, and reafforestation. So afforestation, that is uh, basically planting trees where they have never been trees before. Then deforestation, now this is destroying. This is now cutting down the trees uh, so that maybe so that people can live there or you can do some activities with a piece of land. Then reforestation, uh, the last uh, illustration here, is planting down, planting trees where they had been cut down. So all these processes we have to know what are, what, how do they affect our day-to-day -day life. We know if we plant a lot of trees, it helps in the catchment of uh, the rains. Then another importance of biology, it is using of natural resources. So finding the best ways to get natural resources in ways that are safe, efficient, and don't cause too much damage to the nature. This includes everything from drilling oil to chopping down trees. So by studying biology, it helps us to know ways in which uh, we can safeguard our habitats. For example, when you are drilling oil, you know the ecosystem is uh, aquatic. So there are so many aquatic uh, animals which depend on that uh, water body. So by the oil spreading on that water, it will try to, it will kill down the aquatic life. So we have to know what are the best ways in which we can drill oil. When you chop down trees, there are animals which survive there by uh, staying in those trees. That is a habitat you are destroying. So by uh, learning biology, it helps us to understand the things which we are supposed to do and not to do regarding our uh, environment and also our natural resources. Another importance of biology 
It helps to reduce pollution that affects our environment. So it destroys habitat, especially aquatic life. Uh, an illustration here, we have certain, uh, we have three types of pollution here. We have the air pollution, we have the water pollution, and the land pollution. So when the gases are emitted from the factory to the air, that is polluting our environment. Then when we release waste products uh, or chemicals into water bodies, we are polluting our water and we are destroying life. When we also dispose of uh, garbage or uh, things that we do not require just aimlessly in our environment. We are killing the habitats and we are also causing much harm to ourselves. So we have to know how to safeguard our environment. So this is another uh, vice of not taking care of our environment. For example, we have this uh, worm that is commonly known as guinea worm, which is caused by drinking dirty water. So this dirty water, for example, we are in an environment, we are uh, throwing uh, waste product just aimlessly, we are not taking care of our water bodies, and there are people who take uh, drink water from these water bodies. So by drinking that water, someone can uh, have this uh, guinea worm. And it's a very uh, harmful worm because it's, uh, it's very long, it's three feet, and it can only be removed physically by uh, the doctors. So these kind of diseases are all caused by not taking care of our environment and disposing of things aimlessly. So we have to take care of what we do within our environment because it is going to affect us afterwards. There another importance of biology that is in food production. Biology concepts are in agriculture. So most of these biology concepts are uh, taken in in agricultural sector that, it, uh, that helps it to yield quality and quantity of food. For example, the grafting, uh, you have, it helps to identify the best uh, quality so that uh, the quality can be uh, better and the quantity of food also to be more. So biology and agriculture, they merge because uh, these uh, ideas, they help it to produce uh, enough food and quality food for all the organisms. So for example, we have uh, organic farming here. So uh, it comprises of so many things. There is uh, the animal rearing, the concept of fertilization, uh, which has been combined with biological concepts, the manures which we use in our plant, the, the fact of crop rotation, and the biological management of our farms. All these are concepts in biology which have also been merged, we have been merged with agriculture to bring up uh, quality and quantity food products. Another very important uh, aspect of uh, biology, uh, it offers a wide range of career. So by just studying biology, it's not uh, that you're going to study biology, then you do exams. So after that, you can also have respectable courses and careers, for example. By studying biology, you can either be a doctor, you can be a nurse, you can be a dentist, a physiotherapist, a veteran, you can also be a biotechnologist, you can also do the forensic scientist, then you can also be a nutritionalist, you can be a farmer, you can also be a horticulturalist or a forester, and finally you can be a teacher like Madame Christine. Mm -hmm. Now let us look at the characteristics of living organism. We have studied how uh, biology is important to uh, human beings and to plants and to animals. Now, what are some of the characteristics, what are some of the distinctive things that will make you to be a living organism and then when you look at a stone or something else, you say it is not a living organism. So living organisms have seven main characteristics. So this is, uh, we have an acronym here that will help us to remember the main seven characteristics of uh, living things. So the acronym is Miss Grain. So we take the first uh, letters of each word. Uh, so M, it means movement. R for respiration. S for sensitivity. Uh, G for growth. R is reproduction. E, that is excretion. And N is nutrition. So we're going to look at all these seven characteristics uh, one by one. So the first one is movement. 
so all living things uh, they move either from one place to another and plants do it but uh, in a slow way so all living things have a way in which they move uh, they can move their body or a plant can move uh, from one place to another but the, for the plant is very slow for example we have an example of a kangaroo here uh, the way it's moving is also it's different from the way a plant can be moving uh, we have an example of a plant here it moves by twirling around their stem so the movement is there but it's very slowly co in compared to the way the animals move so that is movement you displacing of a body from one point to another so the first main characteristic of organism is that all of them they move then the second characteristic of living organism is respiration so this is the process by which uh, food substances are broken down in the body to release energy this energy helps organisms to carry out other life processes so this we have already taken it to release the energy so we have an illustration of the cellular respiration uh, what are the ingredients which are needed uh, oxygen and glucose what do they give the products are carbon dioxide water and energy which the living things uh, use then another characteristic of uh, living organism is sensitivity or it can also refer it can also be referred to as irritability this is the ability to sense changes in the environment and to respond to them so the changes uh, we respond to them by using our sensory organs that is the eyes the nose uh, the sense of touch so all those five senses are used to respond to um, irritability so an animals can sense changes in their surroundings by their sense organs we can use our ears eyes to tell us about the surrounding we use our tongues and nose to provide us with information about food if it smell uh, and it's if it's taste ba uh, bad or it may contain poisonous substances some animals such as the insects they have a long antennae which they use to touch the ground to know if it's safe or to go forward or not for example we have an example of a rose Mm, a very beautiful rose over there but it has thorns so if you touch a thorn what happens you're going to uh, quickly redraw, uh, draw, withdraw your hand why because you have sensed that by touching the thorn you have gotten pricked so that ability to sense that change is what is one of the characteristics of the living things which is they are sensitive then another characteristic of living things is growth growth is the process by which organisms they can either increase in two ways which is in size or in mass uh, so characteristics so growth and development these are two different things so living organisms they grow and develop to a to a mature adult form so growth is mainly the increase in size then development is change in shape or the ability for example if it's a baby when a baby is born he or she is not in a position to walk or to comprehend things around him or her by the time he continues developing he is able to walk he is able to crawl and do other things so that is what we call development so all living things plants and animals they undergo this characteristic we call the growth then another characteristic of uh, living things is reproduction. So this is the production of offspring by either sexual or asexual process. So there are two main. So they have to be production of offspring by a means of either sexual or asexual. So we're going to define what is asexual and what is sexual reproduction. So asexual reproduction, this requires only one parent then offspring is identical to the parent so it is just one parent uh, reproducing or doing a copy of another identical uh, offspring so organisms uh, for birds which develop into adults and breaks away from other animal so it can only be done by binary fusion budding or fragmentation an example of an organisms that undergo 
uh, binary fusion we have like the bacteria so it is just one single cell then it divides into two so that is how production uh, the production is done then Sexual reproduction, this is a type of reproduction in which the genetic material from two different cells combine, producing an offspring. For example, here we have a cat. So we have the egg sperm, uh, we have the egg cell and the sperm cell. So when they fertilize and all the, those processes, uh, they produce an, another offspring. So this is by merging the two types of uh, the egg cell and the sperm cell. So all living organisms, they have to reproduce substances from the body. The waste products are which are harmful. So if they are harmful, uh, they can accumulate the body and it's going to be uh, toxic. They can be toxic. So this is mainly uh, removal of waste in our body, which we do not need them. Or they are not, we remove sweat from our body. So those are products which are not needed in our body. So too much accumulation of them can be very harmful in our body. Then nutrition is another characteristic. Take in, we have two types. Uh, we have the plants which are in position to manufacture their own food because they have uh, chlorophyll. And we have the animals which are not in position to manufacture their own food. So they depend on the plants or, or they can eat other animals. So the animals, they will consume their food items which have been produced by the plants or other animals. So we have example of food there, nutrition. Uh, we have different types of food which, which we are, an organism can take, take in. Uh, so that has been our lesson. I'm going to give you an assignment. Uh, the assignment will be, an aeroplane can move and it emits carbon dioxide and water. Explain why it is not a living thing. So we're going to explain this basing on the seven characteristics uh, which we have discussed earlier. So identify why this aeroplane, uh, it's not a living thing. So I keep those SMSs, keep the feedback. Uh, remember our SMS number is 4007. Our Facebook page is Elimu TV. Uh, you can also write to us at uh, our Twitter handle, which is Elimu TV underscore KE. I have been your teacher, Madam Christine Okot. Keep it Elimu TV.